late September, the finals are upon yes. us. And I tell you what, Jimmy, we have got a very, very we big have. show. The Tigers, for the first time in 12 oh, years, yeah. back in the finals, Brett Delidio joins us live in the studio. Oh, yes, we can't wait for the links. A big story out of the West with John Worsfold Ooh. resigning tonight. Damien Barrett will be out here with the latest on that. And speaking of coaches, a man who could be the coach of the year. Port Adelaide in the finals, Ken Hinckley, live from Adelaide on the footy show tonight. Yeah. Looking forward to talking to Kenny. They played Collingwood, of yes. course, and the big power forward, the centre forward, Travis Cloak, on the panel tonight. Oh, yeah, and a man who really has no bearing on the finals at all, but demanded to be here, Patrick Dangerfield's going to be along for Danger. Indeed. And I tell you what, Jim. Straight after our show tonight, around 10.30, yes. a big documentary yes. on the 1980 Grand Final between Amazing. Collingwood and Richmond. We've had a look at it. It is unbelievable. You want to hang yep. around for that. We're going to cross the three big superstars yep. from that game. Yep. But very shortly, within a minute, we have a major oh, announcement yes. to make. So let's get started. <laughs> As you said, we've got a massive show, finals around. It is a great time to be alive. I can tell you, though, right now, before we introduce Come our on. panel and Sam Newman, the grand final footy Ooh. show, only three short weeks away. It is a massive <laughs> night, of course, at Rod Laver Arena. And once again, it is going to be the biggest show of the year. And we're very pleased, Jim Boy, to announce that this year it's an all Aussie rock lineup. No doubt, headlining the show will be a man who's dominated this country's music landscape for the last 20 years. Former Powderfinger frontman Bernard Fanning yeah. will be tearing in the shreds. Two big hits from Bernard, also taking centre stage. Birds of Tokyo, uh, they will be on board to perform their number one single, Lanterns. And 90s supergroup UMI with the magnificent Timmy Rogers. One-off performance, their biggest hits. It's going to be enormous, Gary. Yeah, that is going to be massive. Add to that the grand final review, which is always a viewer favourite. Croft, Campbell Brown, all your favourites will be there along with a host of rookies making their... Review debut, as always, it promises to be the highlight. Plus, the very best of this year's Street Talk of Footy Legends. A few surprises to come. It is going to be massive, Jim. All right, if you want to be there, you need to be quick. You know how this works. The tickets go like a firestorm. Here we are. 132849 is the number. Online, ticketech.com.au. Uh, they cost 70 bucks. They will be gone within the hour, we suspect. 132849 or online, Gary, at ticketech.com. Dot com dot au and experience tells us you need to be yes. in there nice and quick. Get your credit card out and get ready to go. 132849 or log on to tickettech.com.au. 70 bucks a ticket, cheapest entertainment in town. Oh, yes. And they will go within 10 or 15 minutes, so jump on board a night to remember Jim. It is a great way to start this year's final series and a great way to start the grand final is the Thursday footy uh, show, September the tw uh, 26th. No doubt about that, Gary, and a man who knows all about grand final weekend. Grand finals, in fact, is the big power forward from the Collingwood Football Club. Narrowly missed out on the Coleman medal. Always welcome at the footy show. Put your hands together for Travis Cloak. <laughs> Jim. <laughs> oh, look at Paddy. Yes, a big oh. panel here. Plenty oh, to get through tonight. Oh, oh, oh. Lots of news <laughs> around, of course. Another oh, man that come comes on. into his own come September. Come on. Spring, Jim. Where and is I he? think his Where wardrobe is... reflects that yes, it's spring. It Please welcome the 300 game superstar from Geelong, John Sammy Newman. Oh, That beautiful suit you're wearing, it'd be great if it fitted. It's just a yeah, touch, touch short there, of course. Well, they've never been good with pants out the back. No, they've been great. Yeah. Pants are a trifle tight under the armpits Sam. and a bit short. You're wearing a purple suit. 
Yeah, well, I only wear what I'm uh, given. I'm probably not my suit when you think about the length of the pants. Mm. But uh, 20 years I've been... Uh, my legs haven't changed in no. one fashion millimetre. Change. Fashion changes <laughs> and you're at the cutting edge as always. Anyhow, so. if yeah. I sit out all night, no one will notice it. Uh, and AFL history being cre created on Sunday. Why? Essendon for the first time wearing no. their alternate strip when they play... <laughs> oh. When they play the Tigers, no, they wearing? Uh, this, you, you, you've got to see it. What are it's, they wearing? They're, they're wearing, it's a very similar uh, uh, <laughs> Guernsey yes. to Carlton's, is it? Oh, and you'll notice it, and uh, it's the first time, they've, <laughs> first time they've ever worn it. All right. Uh, so uh, that's something to look okay. forward to if you're a fan of uh, the Bombers. And now, we have got uh, a lot to get through tonight. We're going to deal with the, uh, this issue off the top because oh. a lot of people say to me, well, how are you going to deal with the dwarf situation that uh, unfolded on Monday with the Mad Monday in the St Kilda Footy Club? Um, we, of course, have a great relationship with Arthur, who has been on this show regularly throughout the course of this year. We love him. He loves coming on the show. We never get him to do anything that he doesn't agree to, and it is a great joy when he's on the show. So we are not going to make light of it. We, we can't make light of this in any way, shape or form. We don't contone what went on on Monday at all. Uh, Andrew Demetrio, of course, found himself in a difficult situation and has since had to apologise. So from our point of view, Samuel, that is the end of the story. I absolutely go. You watch Talking Footy, though, you were telling me, and you were a little disturbed about it. No, I was. I, 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 I was. And um, Arthur was going to be here, but he's at home with his feet up. Watch well, when I say they're up, they're dangling. <laughs> he's at home <laughs> watching the show from at home. <laughs> oh, oh. And um, it, it, was, it was embarrassing, really. It was uh, shocking. Uh, yeah. Um, apparently, uh, young Blakey is uh, seeking compensation through the Small Claims Tribunal, no. and he will be uh, seeking, <laughs> seeking. I think we can say that. And we've had interest. We've had interest uh, from overseas. Apparently, Rio are looking for a torch, and uh, oh. for the Olympics, and uh, they say Blakey <laughs> could that's, be that's held it, aloft. Could be held aloft and run round the world. Now you wonder why we get into trouble when, no. we, when we decide on something and then you go down the foolish yeah, path. Bringing your own stuff. I, I, well, I tell you what, I am disappointed in Andrew Dimitriou mm. uh, laughing. Why did he apologise? That it is piss funny. No, no, no. <laughs> don't, you can't, doesn't matter. How, it is. That was hilarious. And why he apologised, I have you, no idea. You astound me at times. Oh, I'm you, glad of that, Gary. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not going to go on with it because it will give you more air time. So, um, well, it wasn't it? Was, was no, funny, wasn't not it? in any way, shape, or form. What, was it setting funny? Fire to yeah, a you reckon that's funny, do you? <laughs> I you think it was that's funny? Hilarious. Then? Well, that probably says more about where you're at yeah. than anything else. Uh, Jim, let's get to the panel. Travis Cloak joins oh, us. Yes. Welcome to you, Travis. Yeah. Yeah. Finals come around again. You can take it from granted from time to time if you happen to miss out. But you're there and you're a big chance again. Yeah, it's uh, obviously a pretty exciting part of the year and uh, looking forward to Saturday night. It all kicks off and a uh, little bit of sun in the air, which is nice. Hey, Trav, you're going in good nick too. I had a good look at you on the weekend, and but oh. for some slightly inaccurate kicking. <laughs> I think you took about 10 marks and uh, looked like your touch was really good. You're jumping beautifully at the footy, so you hit September personally in good shape. Yeah, everything's going along pretty well. Body's in good condition and uh, looking forward to what's going to come. Obviously, my goal kicking, still a few problems around that, but um, hopefully in the next few weeks we don't see that again. Well, yeah. fuck. Uh, need oh. to come down to the uh, oh. just have a refresher course on uh, what's required. Maybe I'm always willing to learn. I'm, I'm still in a learning phase of my life, and uh, I'm getting somewhere. Fire can help. Fire can, can, can help. help. Yep. Yep. Yes. Yep. You had four at half time. You knew roughly. You only needed another four, I think, to catch rough. Were you aware of that? And did you say, "Hey, any chance you can kick to me"? No, I was aware, obviously, but um, I've never kicked that many goals in a game in my life, so uh, it was a bit far. Uh, forward for us, but um, four at half time was yeah. pretty, pretty comfy. But Swanee was the one trying to get it to us, yeah. and he actually said, Everyone I give you, cheapy, you got to chuck me a thousand bucks. And obviously, <laughs> I made sure I missed those ones he kicked me. <laughs> exactly. But um, no, it was good. We, we had a, a nice game, but obviously got done by your boys on the weekend. Dane Swan, a very good friend of ours, of course. We had him on last week, did a great job as a panellist, and talked uh, after Gaz asked him about the Rat Pack. Mm. He just revealed the fact that there's another gang down there called the Beaks. The Beaks. Yes. Who drive or ride motorbikes. Uh, here they are. We're going to get some shots up here. There's, of course, the sack on the left there. Goldie's a beauty. <laughs> And uh, Jimmy Possum on the other side there, <laughs> yeah. Alan Toovey. Uh, who else is in this group, please? Yes, three of us and Cam Wood. Um, a couple of years ago, we all decided to get our motorbike licence, have a bit of fun, and 
That's what we do. We, I don't get an afternoon free, go for a bit of a ride and have a bit of fun. And obviously Woody was missing in well, that snap. You've, you've obviously got a proper <laughs> bike, a serious yes. motorbike, whereas we ask you what Woody's doing here because um, he's on a postage <laughs> bike there. <laughs> yeah, he's just uh, delivering the mail there, big Woody. Uh, at the time, he wanted to be a bit safer. His mum wasn't too sure about it. So he stuck with the safer option, the post. He, he hasn't looked back. He loves it. His what? mum wasn't what? too sure. <laughs> Why the beaks? What's the beaks? Um, Big yep. noses? Yeah, maybe that. Yeah, Woody the came up with it too. one night and um, it stuck. And the boys have run with it at the club and give us a bit of grief. But we used a good bunch of blokes talk a bit of crap and ride a bike every so well, Tough gang. Yeah, very hey, tough. tough. Great to have you in here, though, Trav. We've got plenty to talk about the Maggies. Uh, Paddy Dangerfield. The danger. 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 Thank you, mate. Uh, I want to talk seriously about the footy, though. The Crows have missed out. You're a competitive man. Uh, you are involved last year. You're only a kick away from playing in a grand final. How do you feel sitting right here, right now, not being involved this year? Yeah, it's a, it's a tough position to be in. Um, and certainly, the last couple of days, it's really hit home that, you know, when the season really does start, which is September when finals begin, uh, we're not a part of it. And to be so close last year, but I don't think we've wasted the season. We've certainly... Uh, improved in some areas and we've got games into younger players but it's a certainly a disappointing feeling watching and it will be watching uh, the players play this weekend. Danger, you're not a drinker. You don't drink at all during the year and it's my understanding what? that you basically reserve... <laughs> Hard to comprehend, isn't it? Bloody <laughs> oaf it is. <laughs> you reserve oh, you? your one drink of the year for the end of year celebration and I understand that even at that end of year celebration you can only have a couple because you just weren't into it. Yeah, there wasn't... Uh, this year there wasn't too much worth celebrating, to be honest, JB. So, uh, and to be honest, most of the playing group felt very similar to that. Um, last year was a great year for us, and uh, we played some outstanding footy. And this year, it's been a year that not too many of, are too proud of. Um, so when the end of the year came, which was on the weekend, um, you know, it was a real disappointing feeling, I suppose. And we heard, uh, words got back to us that uh, the Adelaide Crows love Big Bill House. And even during a team meeting, you might have had a look at it. We absolutely loved Big Bill House, and that was that was some of your absolute no. best work. Oh. Don't be Gary and Kappa. That was fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but during the team meeting, you actually watched it, didn't you? Well, we had it going in the uh, in one of the players' rooms. Yeah. For how long? So, well, it goes for about 17 minutes, I think. So. <laughs> Just watched it in the team meeting. No. Hey, oh, sorry, Sam. No, Rodney, you'll be watching uh, no. with interest. <laughs> you'll be you'll be wishing the power well, won't you? Adelaide site, you oh, absolutely. What? Just, what? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I've uh, you know definitely rooting for them and just have a bit of a chat to Trevi. So, so back you wouldn't, just to make you wouldn't sure be they, rooting for them? I'm just making sure Trav does his job on the weekend. And <laughs> so so you hope they get plenty. beaten? You hope they get beaten? Uh, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you why you didn't have a good year because you missed easy goals and this is a sitter. Have a look at Richie Douglas here, runs in open goal, bang! It's out! <laughs> He could have kicked that with his doodle. Fair dick. Look at that. Like, mate, how does he miss that? Oh, I can't tell you. That's one of the worst misses I have ever seen. No doubt. That it's is a, a it's shock. up there with this one. We, we, we thought we'd have a look at some of the bad misses. It'd be up there with this one. This is a grand final, though, don't you? Have a look at this. Oh. <laughs> he was just tripping over himself with yeah. the game on the line. Can you find another one? No. Well, it's an important time, no. Bill. It was. Have a look. If you look at it closely, it goes through the goal. <laughs> it's a, a goal. No, it didn't. Which, yeah, which takes us, of course, yes. to this. The worst misses of all time. Have a look at this. Blighty oh, runs no. in open goal. Malcolm Blight, one of the great <laughs> players of all time. He misses that. Have a look at Cameron Ling in his first year. How does he miss that? The Chief. You'll like this one, Sam. You'll look at the Chief just hanging out the back there. Comes to him. Oh, no, <laughs> Some of the greats. It's hard. There's a lot of pressure oh, on no. out there. Look oh, at no. some of the greats. Oh, no. No, Will. Oh! <laughs> we'll move on. This is uh, a guitar player. Uh, what? Uh, from Kadar. Kadar. Oh. He misses an easy goal anyway. Look at that. How do you miss that? That is shocking. Hammer thrower misses the sky. Actually misses the sky. <laughs> Have a look in the NFL here. Trying to be a smart aleck and comes up short. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> no good. No. Cricket. I think this is uh, <laughs> Grant Lambert. Didn't want to go anywhere near Big Tatey. And basketball fans, have a look at Fat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, come on, Fat. Oh, <laughs> yes. 
Hey, Gary. Yes. I did notice a, an air of uh, an, an air of uh, distance when I started mentioning about Arthur and Blake. No, I just think you're no. being ridiculous. That's no, all. I'm sorry about no, that. No, that... if that's the way you think. Well, what I want what I want you to, to thank you, Gary. What I want you to do is, if I err or stray, I want you to again. I want you to do what Bruce did. What? On. Uh, this is what Bruce did. Andrew, what? This is Andrew first, laughing at the dwarf. Andrew Dimitri with nothing to oh, say yeah. on a big issue on, got, on national television. That is... <laughs> that is tactile in the extreme. Tactile meaning touchy-feely. If, if I err, uh, be compassionate. Grab hold of me anywhere. Have a crack at the old vermilion tip no, if you wish. Anything. Do. Just grab hold of me. I'll be at the gym. He's closest to yeah. you. So next time you stray, you want him to just. I to want give you him... to hang on to me heavily and tight. Well, <laughs> to use one of your all. well worn phrases, Force, <laughs> not if it would fill the water reserves for the next hundred years yeah. will I leave over Bruce, and grab What was he doing, Bruce? I, don't, I think he's just... I don't Can't know. What are you doing? You're working him like he's... Like no. He's hey, uh, the grand final tickets, we've got Come to tell on. you, because we don't want you to say that we haven't told you. These are nearly half gone already. One, three, two, eight, four, nine, or tickettech.com.au. Thursday night before the grand final, it really ticks off the grand final week. That's when things start in earnest. The big line-up, Bernard Fanning, Birds of Tokyo, UMI, the mm. player review, the whole box and dice. So that's the number one, three... 2849 on ticketech.com.au. We normally do that in the second uh, break, but they are flying out the door, so I want to give you the chance to get a hold of them now. All right, well, Gary, <laughs> yes. we need to get to a break because I'll tell you what's mm. coming up. An enormous amount with the purple. Speaking of Gary oh. Sands' purple <laughs> suit, the genuine purple's out here, and he's got all the latest on what's happening in the West with John Worsfold. Stick around on the footy show. Stop. Tonight on the footy show, finals footy's here, and the Tigers are in the mix for the first time since 2001. So exciting! To preview their do or die clash with the Blue Boys, we'll have star midfielder Brett Delidio in live. Plus, we catch up with some former Richmond legends at the premiere of the final story, 1980. And you ask for more, so you've got it. Crawford files in another street talk from Frankston. The camera, isn't it? Yeah. Shut up, I'm on the camera, you boys. Yeah, sure, he speaks. Shut up, he's on the camera. What the hell was that? Plus, with Port turning it all around this year, we cross to Coach Ken Hinckley as Big Kenneth and his boys prepare for the pies. And don't forget to cast your vote before the Cats take on Freo this Saturday. I'm the guy with the <laughs> not bad looking boys. Just say hot, Tone. Hot. And Big Andy's read the letters in Sam's mailbag. Looks like we're in for a long overdue crispy. That's all tonight on the Footy Show. Welcome back to the Footy Show. Thanks to Nissan Navarro, Home Timber and Hardware and sportsbet.com.au. It's been fantastic supporters of ours all year and we thoroughly appreciate that. And just a reminder, Brett Delidio, not far away for Tigers fans. He's live in the studio. Oh, and he's a star. Speaking of stars, plenty of them on display. This game is going to be enormous. Tomorrow night at the MCG, the Hawks and the Sydney Swans. Have a look at the house. Jeray comes out. Hector Savage is out as well as Franklin, who, of course, has been rubbed out. Now, Savage may well come back in, Willis, because we do not know about Cyril Rioli. Yes, good work, so Jim. we'll watch that very closely. Jared Ruffhead is a superstar. Coleman medalist, everyone. Put your hands together for Ruff. All right, the Sydney Swans, let's take a look at the reigning Premier. Back on the MCG. And they have the outs down the bottom there. More important, though, are the ins. Tippett comes in enormous. Jetta comes in enormous. Hanabry is a very, very, very talented young man. And Nick Smith is also a high-quality player. Bill Brownless, they are big ins for the Swans. They are huge ins, Jimmy Boy. Jetta, I think he only played one game in the, in the uh, reserves last week, so he might be the sub. But i tell you what I like last week, uh, Danger. Pike, White and Mummy all up forward. When they drifted forward, they were very, very good. And they mark well, so... I am going with Ooh, Sydney at $2.50. Oh. <laughs> Sydney for me. What do you like? I agree. I agree, Bill. I think uh, they're going to be very hard to beat. They bat very deep in their midfield. Yep. They've got 12 players that run through there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I think, you know, along with Tibbet who returns, they're going to be very hard to beat. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. Cute, mate. <laughs> no, I'm going to jump with the boys. I'm going to go to the Swans as well. Wow. Um, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to read it too much into what happened last week. They got done. Buddy's out. Massive loss. But Gee. Cyril, who knows what's going so on there. three Shoot. of you are all going for yes. Sydney, is that right? Yeah. Against a side that's lost three games for the year. And finished top of the ladder. That's yeah. unbelievable. Can they be too top heavy? Tippett comes in to White and Mumford and Pike. Mm. What's no. the conditions going to be like? Ooh. Who, who's a weatherman right. here? No, I'm not sure. Oh, first. Rain. Rain. Murph, 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 Murph reckons rain. Oh, Murph wouldn't know. Yeah, he wouldn't know. That's true. But if it rains, it'll be interesting, Gaz. So mm -hmm. We'll have to have a look at the emergencies. Yeah, they're underdone. Only the one game back, so you're taking players who are a little bit underdone. Well, so. who do you like then? Well, I'll tell you in a minute. I want to listen to what oh, Sam's got to yes. say. Oh, uh, yes. You could get a box trifecta with Stevie Johnson, Campbell Brown and Lance Franklin for inappropriate tackles just at the wrong time of the season. Mm. Uh, an amazing yeah, thing that Lance would just uh, lapse. Yep. Uh, but I tell you what, the Hawks. I mean, how could you possibly... <laughs> how could you possibly tip the swans, guys? They come down here and the Hawks will roll them convincingly. Mostly yes. cloudy 19, it says oh, here, Gary. I so uh, I you don't, Mike Larkin. I don't think... <laughs> <laughs> well, this is what you got, your little lap for. Rebecca Judd. Rebecca <laughs> Judd, <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey, um, since 2008, Come on. this is without Buddy in the side, the Hawks. They win 13% more without him. Without. They kick two more goals on average and they win by an average of 50 points. So without what, Buddy. Why do they play him every week? Very, <laughs> very good stat, guys. Yeah, like so I should have known that before. I'm, in fact, I'm glad I tipped the yeah, Hawks we, we on got, based on that. A little bit more time. The Sydney boys, only you watched it last week, I'm sure, <laughs> yes. they tackled beautifully in the first half. They had Hawthorne under all sorts of pressure, couldn't sustain it. Now, can, if they were able to keep that sort of pressure up, maybe they win. Can they do that in the MCG? Yeah, I reckon that's that's the key. Obviously, you've got to hold them down there at free-flowing footy, but stuff the buddy stat, that's shit. <laughs> like that. What about the midfield? Eloquently put, Travis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he summed it up. The midfield with Hanterbury coming back. Who, who bats the deepest in the midfield? I think Sydney do. I think they've got a lot more players that run through there. Um, that being said, Hawthorne are obviously an outstanding midfield. But I think Sydney have the best midfield in the competition. They've proved that throughout the season. Uh, and they've got some really good players that come in again. Hanabry's had an outstanding year. Um, they've got some great players that just continually roll through there. All right, well, I'm going to roll with the Hawks. I reckon Sydney gave me a good miss. The Hawks absorbed it pretty well and uh, ran away pretty comfortably last week, having had a look at it. That's why I think. Sportsbet.com.au got a generous money-back special for the first weekend of finals footy. This is great. It's the final margin is 18 points or less. Sportsbet punters will get their first head-to-head -head bet on the match refunded up to 100 bucks. Some conditions do apply. Visit sportsbet.com.au for details. And last time I checked, did a bit of homework, Bill. 18 points is just three straight ones. That's a big margin in finals footy. If you're going to have a bet on the finals this weekend, sportsbet.com.au is the place for you. Always gamble responsibly. Maybe we could get uh, the double. What would the double labour and the Swans to win on the weekend. Write your own ticket. Yep. Write your own ticket. Yep. Hey, speaking of the Swans force, we were up there on uh, the weekend, last weekend, Friday. with Triple M footy, of course, and um, once the game finished, we spilt out the front and got ready to get in the car and go. And uh, this man to my right, Gary Lyon, was uh, very much sought after with the oh, photos, danger. Yes. All the young kiddies out there with their jumpers on wanted a piece Ooh. of the wolf. The old and ladies. That, again, Bill, there was a conga line yeah, out on the boardwalk oh, of, of people yeah. wanting to have their photo with Gary. <laughs> and this young man has put his on an Instagram and it caught our eye because there's Gaz and there's the young man. Yep. And down the bottom he says he met Barry Lyon. <laughs> B A R R Y L I O N. At the footy. <laughs> so you made a big impact on him, Gaz. He loved it. Send your autograph back, kid. You look like you're about to eat him. No, it was you look huge. We were waiting for the bus, Samuel. It was late at night. Hey, uh, finals are great. We look forward to them every year, but we look forward to Sam's mailbag oh, much yeah. more. Oh. Samuel. I had a few. I'm so, look, look, that stuff about Blakey was. Don't even joke about it. And well, I was joking it. about it. Mm. The torch stuff went a bit get far. Oh, no, I'll be honest. Uh, <laughs> now, you, you might remember last week that the great Dane Swan, mm. he said that he was going over to see Jay Z. Who is a disco operator, is he? What is he? Jay Z is a rapper, yep. Jay Z. Jay Z. Yep. And I think he has uh, found, he has found another man called 50 Cents. 50 Cent? <laughs> 50 Cent. 50 Cent, his name is. 50 Cent? 50 Cent, yeah. And I think he's uh, 
sort him out and he's personally 50 Cent, or Fiddy, whatever <laughs> 50 his cent. bloody name is, <laughs> Fiddy Cent has personally autographed a uh, Scanlon's oh. card of our great friend here. Hello. This is Gary's card that we... Uh, oh, go on. Now, see that? Fiddy Cent, there's, oh. his, <laughs> there's his signature down the bottom. Yeah. Fiddy Cent. So uh, dollars. Dane has already left and gone over and got a wrapper. That's not on the run. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, but uh, that's a Scanlon's card. And you'll notice about it is that it's spelled G A R Y, right. Gary Lyon, and it says that's Gary right. Dollars Lyon. Well, it's not worth any money. Now, what's the uh, uh, Gary Dollars Lyon? And the tilt a clean set of heels there, too, guys. On the left, just another one. What <laughs> have you got there? Lockie of Geelong. This should be worth a prize, says Lockie. I am 70 years old, you stupid old bastard. <laughs> <laughs> it took me 10 days to do this. Uh, this is. Uh, the first. The first. Good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy. Oh, no. Oh, no. Lucky, the stupid old prick, has got, uh, <laughs> he's got his parrot to crap on me. <laughs> I, I tell you what, a big, a lot of stuff going on down at Geelong, uh, Gary. I mean, has that man, is that a man with time in his hands? <laughs> when you watch it, the parrot started to walk off the photo, he whacked it. He's giving it back. I don't, have, it up. I don't have a lot of luck with uh, yeah, people know. and their pets, uh, to be birds. honest. Yeah. Uh, all birds. This was, from <laughs> this was from earlier in the year. Do you like Sam Newman? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that reminds us, of course, Gary, of that time on a <laughs> line. What would you do if a bird oh. shat on oh. the windscreen of your car? What would you oh. do? You wouldn't go out with her again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you this is for I know, I'm sorry. I, I, I kicked the bottom out of the bassinet when oh, I first heard oh, that. I'm sorry about that. Oh, oh, on, Ringo! Oh, oh. Danger! Oh, what was that? Hey. Rodney, have you heard that before? <laughs> it's one of the worst. <laughs> it's old, isn't it? Even you've heard of that. Ringo of Beechworth. Sam, did you ever have one of these when you were at school? Oh, yeah, wow. A swing aid. What? A swing aid. What are they? A swing wing. I've even I even kept the one I had. It's called for. Called a swing wing. It's a swing wing, Sam. A swing wing. A swing wing ad. Looks like a lot of fun. Yeah, I'll show you how much fun it is. Get this on, Jim. Come on. Hello. What do you do? Now I'll tell you what you do. Is this an actual swing wing? This is it. I had one. You had one at home. This is it. They did. They came out. They came out in the fifties. What is it? It's a swing wing, I'll show you. Pull it a bit tighter, can you? Yeah. What? Pull yeah. it tighter. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Look at the set up on him. Yeah. Right, what's a swing wing? This, what, this is it. What's the fun in it? Oh. Oh. I'm going to do it. Come on. Now, hang on, hang on. Pull it tight. Give it a well, real I'm, good wing. Pull it, Jim. Watch out, don't pull your face. No, <laughs> Speaking of school, oh, says yes. Ringo, yeah. could we please have two footy show tickets yeah. to raffle to help raise money for our new kindergarten? We had a fate on the weekend, but the rides, for some reason, didn't prove as popular as we had hoped. Now, have a look at this. Oh, no. Uh, oh, come on. Oh, come on. That's force. not on force for the uh, kiddies. What, what, what do, you think, do you think I sent that in? Can't have the kiddies riding on that. Well, that, that's that, not was, a ride. that was an aid to help them get onto the ride. Oh, but unfortunately, oh, it looked like... No, I know what it looked like. The old Vermillion yes, Tidal. Oh. <laughs> not surprising. So, no wonder people didn't want to jump no, on it exactly. in case they were yeah, accused yeah, of uh, yes, untoward yes. Uh, conduct. Have got another letter? Mm. Yeah, I have. As a matter of fact, Gary. <laughs> Quickly. <laughs> Last week, I love. Oh, now this is good. Well, I think it's good. Last week, this is from Kylie of Midvale in Western Australia. How do you sing off? Uh, Last week, I loved that old modelling shot of Jim. Here he is. Oh, look at him. He's Frank. young. Frank. Like it. 
just a short girl beside you. <laughs> <laughs> His young, fresh... That's, that's, uh, that's Blakey's no, music. No, no, His young, fresh... <laughs> His young, fresh-faced... No, hang on. His young, fresh face and hair reminded me of the drawings in a sex education leaflet my 12-year-old bought, she's got, but it should be brought, oh. home from school last week called How to Make Love, What Does an Orgasm Feel Like? <laughs> this is true. <laughs> and then it goes on to say, an orgasm is like a build-up of energy that is finally released. Oh. It's always a good idea to get the jodhpahs off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Before the build-up oh, of energy on, explodes boys. in them. Um, oh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, I can't remember that. <laughs> what? Oh, no. I can't remember the last time. Oh. Can't you? Can't you? Anyhow, I can faintly remember what the big O feels like, and it's not quite as laid, laid back. At, it reminded me a bit of this. <laughs> this is what it looks, suddenly comes at you with a rush. Look. Oh, this is... I'd wait for it. This is what it built. This is what it will get. Oh! <laughs> oh! If you want to be a part of this, you go back to London. I'm going to be trying for 2001. <laughs> Sam's up there, Megan. Nine.com.au or footyshow.com.au for Sam's mailbag. Now, we have only got a few thousand of these left, so if you want to come to the grand final footy show, you better make it real quick. Get stuck into the number there, 132849, with your visa, credit card, or ticketech.com.au. As I said... Virtually none left, and the ones that are left are going real quick. So jump onto that right now. We're going to a break. Brett Delidio for Tigers fans when we come back. <laughs> show the many talents of our modern day player. Only fear that we go around the panel, I think, to uh, get the favourite movie quotes from these three oh, gentlemen. May and force, because he'll get involved. Bill, come on, give us your best. Oh, and do it like Brownie, take it seriously. Yeah, I'm going to. Yeah. Get in my belly! <laughs> <laughs> what else say I the floor? Where's your shitter? <laughs> I got the turtle head fucking <laughs> And my titties! My titties! <laughs> Terrible. Oh, not hey. bad. Danger. This is your strong suit. Yes, it is. Right. If I'm not back in five minutes, just wait longer. <laughs> <laughs> he loves Ace hey, Ventura, of course, and uh, Big Trav. You got a hard act. I got nothing. I'm, I'm no good. I let these boys tell me I'm all in. Oh, they said, don't do one, did they? Exactly. <laughs> That's how good I was. Oh, so nice from you. Now, uh, Foss. 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 Give us a big, long die, Tribe. Give us one of your short versions. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I did, uh, W.C. Fields. Yeah, oh, no-one's ever heard of W.C. Fields. No, we haven't. Haven't you? No, we no. One we, we'd know of. Now, give us a bit of W.C. Um, <laughs> my great-uncle... Um, <laughs> <laughs> my great-uncle Effingham Hoofnickel had a fiendish philosophy in life. He was a mile and a half up in the basket of the balloon and decided to jump and take a chance that he'd land in a load of hay. He didn't make it, but that's not the point. The point is, never leave things in life until it's too late. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, speaking of impersonating, we, we've got a photo of you here, Paddy. Have a look at this. No pecs, no muscles, nothing. What is going on there, Paddy? That is you. What are you doing, Paddy? Yeah. Um, that was my second pre-season, and I've learnt now, even if you are tired, just act like you're not. Yeah. yeah exactly right. uh, which, uh, <laughs> guys, look about this photo. reminds us of... No, no doubt about it. This. Exactly. Ah, oh, Jimmy! <laughs> look at Jimmy, boy! And, uh... Sheepers! <laughs> No, no pecs and no, no muscles, muscles, but a lot of pecker. <laughs> <laughs> Jimmy, so. you snuck it in one more time there, Jimmy. Uh, What's hey, that? You gonna... snuck it in one more time, oh, the yes, photo. Snuck it in one more time. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, we've got to straighten up here. Come on. It's, it's a final series Ooh. that... For the first time in 12 years, is going to include the Richmond Footy Club. And I don't care whether you're back for the Tigers or not, that is a good thing. We've got a very special guest to come out here. He was the number one draft pick, the rising star. He's won two Jack Dyer medals as the best and fairest player for the Richmond Footy Club. Was an All-Australian uh, All Australian last year. Played 194 games. Will play his first final this week weekend. Please welcome Rick Delivio. <laughs> Thank 
Nice to have you in, young man. 194 games is a long enough wait. I think your uh, great teammate uh, Chrissy Newman holds a record at the moment, and he'll break that on the weekend. So it's a bit of a relief. Yeah, it sure is. I'm uh, I'm actually not that sure of uh, what to uh, what to make of it, and what to think of it. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And I'm just just generally excited. I can't I can't I can't wait. Well, Lids, there's going to be 90 plus, and you're playing against your arch enemy. You have to be inside the Richmond tent to know quite how much you dislike Carlton, and vice versa. So that makes it even better. Yeah, it is. We've always had some uh, some good games against Carlton. I used to barrack for them when I was uh, a lot younger, but um, so I enjoy always enjoy beating them. But um, haven't done it too much in the past, in the recent. Uh, now tell us, history. your great mate Newey, and he's a good mate of ours, a panelist not long ago, yeah. has had to wait forever, and now he's in danger of missing. Surely, <laughs> oh. doesn't matter how injured he is, he's got to play. Newey, he, he can't. No, nah, he, he won't be missing. He's uh, I think he's been named to play, and um, I'm pretty sure he'll be uh, lining up for his uh, his first final, which that is, is fantastic. Two hundred and thirty-two yeah. games. That's a good enough mate. Now, um, we go along with and we watch the footy as just commentators now, and the Tiger Army has grown and grown over the journey. I mean, this week of training, I think, would have been one of the greatest weeks of your life to go out to go down. You've got people wandering up and turning yep. up for training. This is what uh, footy's all about, right here, mate. Yeah, it's good. It's, it's great uh, reward for our supporters that have stuck with us for uh, for those 12 years we haven't played finals, but uh, also those years that since we've uh, won a flag, you know. So it's it's great for them, and um, it's great for us just to experience it and uh, and see how far we can take it. Speaking of training, Delids, what yep. is going on here, mate, with the human bowling? Uh, having a bit of fun? <laughs> they all lie down. They get yeah. hit in the head with a ball. <laughs> <laughs> like that's got to hurt. That's a that's a game that uh, Troy Chaplin's brought over. It's for the rehab boys that aren't doing too much on the, on the day off there. So. Um, if you lose the game, you uh, get the ball rolled at you and uh, hit and scone. Speaking of Troy Chaplin, he's one of the very few that have played finals footy. Yep. And he's calling himself Xavier. Yes. We're here down there. What, <laughs> what is Xavier? Uh, he calls himself Xavier the Saviour, mate. He's, uh, he's brought us back from the, from the dark days and, uh, and brought us into the finals. So, yeah. hey, speaking of Troy Chaplin, uh, Bill, I didn't realise that he and Lids are old, old teammates. Have you got a photo here of Have a look at this. Yeah. This is how, how 2001. Oh, yeah. A couple of good-looking roosters there. Um, yeah, that was probably the last final I played in, actually. Um, <laughs> nice uh, bum crack hairstyle that you've got there too, Liz. But that is 2001 when the Tigers were last in the finals. Yeah, that's a, it's a long time ago, and uh, no, I'm looking a little bit better now. A bit more facial hair. <laughs> no, Samuel, you're a finals. Uh, oh, great man. Finals devotee, a devotee. What, what advice can you give for Liz? It'd be a bit, bit toey, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, I'd panic. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, just get jittery oh, and uh, no. Oh, no. Gary, have a very cool, calculating mind and a big, hot, strong body. That's what it's about. Uh, <laughs> a what? Hot. A hot, strong body. Be revved up, but have cool, calculating brain Bill, Something that I don't think you. No, I'll give it to you. Don't play the game before Sunday. Oh, thank you. Bill. Thanks, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> Has the irony. <laughs> That's good advice. <laughs> the danger, have you had that advice last year? You might have gone all the way. I'm, good I'm inspired. How have you rated the Tigers this year? I think they've been outstanding. Um, and when we played against them, they, they demolished us. They've got a fantastic midfield. I think Chrissy Newman, you know, he really is the architect of their defence and is important in for them this week. What about Big Jack, Trav, as we've got lids here? You've been the key, the P, if you like, in many a, a Collingwood final. How did the big boys go? Is it uh, easy for them? Oh, it's a massive day. I saw him yesterday, actually, Jack, and he said he was a little bit nervous, uh, which is a good thing, I reckon. You want to go in these games a little bit on edge, a little bit toey, and um, I know he's pretty excited. I reckon he wants to take that first mark, kick that goal, and... Get it done. Do you want to play the game before Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> no, thanks, Bill. Ed Kernow, Lindsay, because yep. you're going to get some attention. You're, you're such a talented player, um, and, and looks like he will be the one who will go to you, or certainly someone will. Yeah. Uh, what are you expecting? Um, well, last time he played on Trent, and um, I think... Kept Zach, into 14 touches. Zach Tui played on Dusty, and Dennis Armfield played on... Um, oh, Dennis. Ooh, Dennis. On uh, Brandon. So, and I, this, uh, I played on uh, Gibbsy, so... I'm not sure if that'll line up the same way, but um, uh, it'll be exciting nonetheless. Let's have a look at the lineup. We've got plenty to talk to you about, but let's have a look at this game. Mitchell will take down the Blues. Sunday, 3-3 start at the MCG. The Tigers, have a look at them. They 
finished fifth beat Essendon by 39 points. They've got uh, a few changes. White is out with a hamstring, but it is a squad because it's a Sunday game. Newman, Jack Revolt, Edwards and Day come back into the side. Daniel Jackson, what a year he has had. He might win your best and fair. So that is a very, very strong lineup. They take on the Blues and there's some big ends here too. Have a look at this. We put Adelaide by a solitary point and they've included to that team Chris Judd, if you don't mind. He's Scotland, the best and fairest winner from last year. And Brocky McLean, who I think last time they played the Tigers absolutely sliced them the ribbon. So that is a good looking Carlton lineup. They fancy themselves. I'll get tips and then we'll go back to Lids. Uh, Trav, how are you seeing um, I'm actually going with the Tigers first by I'm looking forward to winning. Um, but Massive congratulations to Mick, first coach uh, to actually coach four individual teams in Ooh. finals ever. So massive achievement, the old coach Mickey. Great Good effort, that danger. Yeah, I think Richmond. I think. Uh... I think they've got a really underrated defence. I think their defence is very good. Chris Newman backs uh, incredibly important for them, so I think they'll get the job done. Billy, last time they played, eight goals to two in the first quarter the Tigers kicked, and then the, the uh, Blue Boys reeled them in. They did, and a really good record, the Blue Boys, over the Tigers over the last ten. But I'm going for the Tigers because of this, Gary. This very reason here. Have a look at this man here. He's half man, half machine. Not sure what's going on here, Delitz. What's this? <laughs> There's a new boot that Adidas brought out, mate, and I, uh, I was yeah, painted up and Ooh. carrying on a fair bit there, as you can see. Barney. That's why they win. Uh, yeah, Jack Revo, he's, he's going to be right to go physically. He didn't play on the weekend. He's yep. had knee and back. Is he up and about, ready? Yeah, he's definitely up and about. Um, I'm not sure Jack knows any other way, but um, very excited and uh, over his little niggles and uh, looking forward to playing, I suppose. And Aaron Edwards, the old oh. North Melbourne boy, has come with a big rush and yes. has got a very good record in finals. So you got him in there as well, some big clunkers. Yeah, it is. It's, it's good to have a couple of targets there for us to, uh, to kick to. And um, uh, as has played in some pretty big games himself, so he's um, another one we can uh, look to. I suppose the one or two percenters count for a lot in finals. Now, Essendon in the alternate strip. Yep. Would you, <laughs> would the fact that you might be beaten by the side that finishes ninth after you have for a hundred years, would that spur you on just for that extra one percent? Or nothing? <laughs> For you, Sam, yep, yeah, definitely. <laughs> for that suit, mate, I reckon, uh, yeah, for that, just that little bit. You won't recognise uh, the uh, bombers in their alternate strip. Uh, <laughs> so and it's, it's, that's three cracks. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and here's my real advice, uh, mate. All, uh, if kicking for goal particularly, see the ball as an opportunity to succeed, not to fail. Okay. Relish it. Relish getting it so that you know you can do something, rather than... So exciting! <laughs> Jeepers! Uh, so, uh, no, Jeepers! Gary, if ever I've seen a side going to win... OK, ever. let me tell you those stats before you do, just to see if these impact mm. on you. Have uh, won once against the Blues yes. in the last 11 games that they've played, and Carlton have won 15 of the past 20 clashes cool. between these two sides. This reinforces my tip. <laughs> I think the Tigers wow. will belt... Well, Belt, this is the fourth time, oh, well, no. Belt, Essendon in the alternate strip. <laughs> I, um, Lids, your coach, I reckon, has been absolutely sensational, Damien Hardwick. Yep. He's, he's come in, he's got the team very quickly playing his style of footy and really resembling the way he played, which I'm sure was exactly what the, the board at Richmond had in mind when they brought him in. When he speaks, uh, your members listen and gravitate to him. He's, he's been absolutely brilliant. A premiership player himself, so I reckon he would have been a really calming influence this week. Yeah, he said, and I think the biggest thing he said is just enjoy it. Um, I think, you know, from, from when we started in 2010, the Damon's just stuck uh, to his plan and we haven't wavered from it, which has been uh, quite refreshing and something that you can really look forward to, I suppose, going in on a Monday and not having to uh, worry about what's going to change during the week. So, um, yeah, Tim has been fantastic and I think it's just a reward for him, uh, you know, get, getting us into the finals and hopefully we can take it a bit further. It's great to have a cool, calm head as coach going into finals, no question about that. And this is your, the last coach that took Richmond to a final oh, series no. is this man here and uh, oh, he's no. just uh, oh, cool, cool, calm, didn't get, that's how many times he coached him into the finals, that's what he's <laughs> showing me. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll be watching. Hey, uh, talk a lot about Richmond obviously, boys, just want to get your thoughts on Carlton. Uh, this is a side that's yes, been given a reprieve. They were down and out last week. They go in, they'd have to have a nothing to lose mentality. Yes. They add Chris Judd to the side. Cruiser didn't play last time. McLean and Scotland come back in. They're going to go in very confident. And Murphy and Gibbs were very good last week. Murph back into some form. Uh, Paddy, and also Walker's been outstanding. So, look, they're a chance, no doubt about that. 
I think it's going to be a lot closer than what everyone mm. has been saying. I think Lockie Henderson's had a great year yep. and, and been really damaging for them forward. So I think Chappie will have a big job this week uh, up against him. And if Lockie can fire, I think anything can happen for the Blues. Yeah, I personally don't care. Richmond, <laughs> Richmond going to win. That's me. I, I, don't know, I think Carlton might have switched off a few weeks ago when trying to come back in. And Tigers will win this one pretty Samuel, much. Samuel, what about the Malthouse factor? Um, yep. You've got the stat there that this is the fourth team he's coached in no, the final series. He's it against uh, Dimmer, Hardwick, who's been outstanding, but his first final series as coach. No, he's a fantastic coach, and uh, you don't need me to say that because those stats uh, prove it. Mm. And uh, he's not responsible for the rules, and it is a fantastic effort to get him there. There's no doubt about that, uh, even by a point to keep Jim's mob out. Mm. Um, I think it would be a fairy tale if they could beat Richmond. I don't think Richmond will let them do it if those one percenters count for anything. No, I, I tend to agree. I think Richmond will win. I think their form's been great. I think they're ready to play final footy. Uh, how are you going with tickets, Delitz? A lot of fans out there, a lot of supporters. How are you going with tickets? How many calls you had? Um, I was saying today on another interview that I haven't had that many. I've got mum and dad coming, uh, my wife and uh, her mum, so not that many. <laughs> the Kyle boys are in the finals, sitting on top of the ladder yeah, as well. Yeah, they're so all busy, I think. It's yeah. a very big year. And yeah, brother's playing finals as well, so missing out. Ooh. I'll tell you what, Lids, if you tear it, well, I should say when you tear it to shreds, just a couple of real good finals, and they might change the name of the stand <laughs> up at Kyabram. Hopefully. The Brett no. Delidio, you wouldn't have thought, Gary? Don't oh, think so. Not, not, not quite. Hey, speaking of tickets. You get stuck into the grand final footy show because Ooh. there are now bugger all <laughs> left. And I'll tell you what, it's going to be enormous. There's the big stars of the oh. show wandering out. 132849 <laughs> 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 one, Bill or ticketech.com.au. But as we said, Birds of Tokyo, UMI, Bernard <laughs> Fanning. Players' review is absolutely well, what sensational. What about the parodies we've been shooting all oh, week, Jim? How about wow, some of those? They will be, I'm telling you, you have to be there. Players to experience review? it live. 13 said and a half, said that, Bill, listen. 13 and a half thousand will be there, so get stuck into that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, great story, Richmond, this year. They're into their first final series since 2001. Thank Brett Delidio for coming. <laughs> Good luck, Delidio. Well, you're playing right after this. Their ongoing support's been fantastic throughout the year. This is a very busy news time of the year. Player movements and coaches moving as well. And the man is right across at the best in the business. Damien Barrett joins us. Welcome, Damien. Yes. Welcome. Johnny Warsaw, been coach of the Best Class Eagles for 12 years. Revered uh, former player, won a premiership. Uh, sudden turnaround in my eyes today when he stepped down. Yeah, sudden, uh, probably at least three weeks in the making, I reckon, Gaz. We'll t touch on that in just a moment. But, yeah, three hours ago, announced officially that he was not going to be coaching the West Coast Eagles any longer. He didn't front the press conference that announced that in Perth. Uh, replacing him there was his chairman of the Eagles, Alan Kransberg, and also the chief executive, Trevor Nisbet. Let's just take a listen at what they had to say about that departure today. The first person you see is the chairman, Alan Kransberg. We've talked to John right through about... Um, his future um, and the board in fact has a process in place that would have concluded by middle of September as to determining the next coach's future or the next coach of this football club. John made that decision independently of the club. I'm not sure what John's thoughts are. He, ne he just needs a break and I would doubt that he'd coach next year but you never say never in this industry uh, because uh, things may change over the next two months but Certainly I don't think he was in that frame of mind this morning and, and uh, he's probably not in that frame of mind at the moment. It's really important to note that would, to me would be very disrespectful to John if we were out there shopping around for coaches. We had not finished our own board processes when he made his announcement. So as Trevor said, we're right at the start now and we will put together a process. As I said, I think we got it pretty right last time. We got a coach that was sensational for 12 years. Alan Kransberg and Trevor Nisbet there. The three matches we refer to were a Geelong loss by 66 points, Collingwood by 62 and then Adelaide by 86. Those three games rocked John Worsfold to the point where he just wasn't sure about himself. Going from that last game against Adelaide into player meetings during the week, he was just so unsure of himself that he felt the time was right to get out of it. It must be said the feedback coming back from the players to both John himself and other people at the footy club wasn't all that complimentary. It was certainly a decision that was arrived at mutually and I think everyone now and certainly by tomorrow morning when they've all slept on it, 
they will all be convinced that it is the right decision for him to leave, for, for both himself and the footy club. OK, because for most of the year we all sat back and watched him and watched his body language and he looked like a man that perhaps had come, because 12 years at the one club is a, is a really long time and yeah. having won a premiership, it looked like the natural end had come. And then there was a subtle change, I think, from John himself where he actually stated that he was keen to go on, but you reckon that the last three weeks perhaps took him back again to where he was early in the year? Yeah, totally got him. And you mentioned 12 years as a coach. There's actually 24 of the mm. club's 27 mm. years as either a player and a coach. And uh, five grand finals the club's played in. He's either been captain or, or coach of those teams. He's had a, a robust, to use that footy terminology, relationship with his chief executive, Trevor Nisbet. It's been a healthy one most of the time. But Alan Kranzberg went and backed him very early on publicly and made it very clear if he wanted to stay on, he, he could. It actually was an issue for the club. It backed them in, into a corner to the point where he had to make the decision himself. Um, what it means for, for Paul Ruse, well, Alan Kranzberg tonight's told uh, Hutchie, Craig Hutchison, only uh, moments ago that he personally feels it is a done deal that Paul Ruse will be accepted as Melbourne footy club coach. He will make the call nonetheless tomorrow by the sounds of that conversation he's had with Craig Hutchison, but Melbourne tonight hasn't made any reference at all to Paul Ruse at its best and fairest. I oh, know you're moving on, Purple. We do need to acknowledge, though, that John Worsfold is a legend of that footy club. An unbelievable yeah. career he's had. And um, we congratulate him for everything he's achieved. Sam, at the West Coast Eagles. Yep. Yeah. You said that um, they rang round or it wasn't complimentary what they'd said about John. The players. Yes. So by way of feedback. Would it be fair to say that John saw the writing on the wall then? Yeah, there's a bit of that. And he, he felt it himself, Sam. In the last three matches, as we said, combined with the player meetings he had at the start of the week, right. where he just felt he just couldn't bring himself to do it. Um, go Was he at the conference? No, he didn't go to the press conference. Hadn't spoken publicly. He's, he's made a statement right. saying nice things you about You're reading the club. something into that, Willis? I am a little bit, yes. <laughs> just leave it with me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, guys, uh, the future of Nick Del Santo as a St Kilda player is far from certain. He's got a trigger clause in his contract, which he has actually met. It means he's going to be, very soon, a contracted St Kilda player for next year. But what we can tell you tonight is that the club has considered a future without Nick Del Santo and it will continue to consider a future without Nick Del Santo. He himself, we believe, is also of the same view, that a future away from St Kilda may well be best for him. If the right offer is on the table, it will be explored and entertained. It will have to be done, though, as an old-fashioned trade, not the uh, free agency which the AFL has enlisted at, bec because this trigger clause, which he's met by playing a certain amount of games, will take him into a contract into next year. But as we said, the club, we tried to get comment from them tonight. They didn't want to comment on this particular so matter uh, at all. Is, we're at the situation where if, the, if both player and club think it's the right decision, then Nick Del Cerno is, is likely to move. Is yep. it, we, we, is I, that... If the right decision can be made, if they can get the right trade for him, mm. he will could certainly... Uh, they will look at it and he will be a open win -win. to it. If it's the right club. It's not going to be a right. full 17 club option for him, but if it's the right club and if it's the right exchange, they will do it. Say so this with some trepidation, the Bombers. Yeah, <laughs> we don't need to worry about it tonight, Sam. There is uncertainty, as we know, on the coaching front, a little bit to play out there. There's going to be uncertainty on the playing front, too, and we've known that was for the case for some time. Jason Winderlich is a free agent. There's a lot of interest in him in the marketplace out there. There's a, he's a long way off from signing, and basically what it comes down to is Essendon is only prepared to offer him a one-year deal, and there are other clubs out there offering him a two-year deal. There's a lot to play out for him to stay as a bomber. As we said some months ago, Stuart Cramery has a, has a massive offer in his context, anyway, from the Bulldogs. It's a four-year deal, about $450,000 a year for him to go and be a Bulldog. Ideal world for him. He stays as a bomber, but there's a long difference, a big difference between what go? Essendon... You think he'll go? I think he will. I think he will. Um, Scott Gumbleton is also in that unknown zone by way of future. And the interesting one, and the one that the Bombers really want to keep, is Tom Bell Chambers. And GWS just has not given up all year on making an offer for him. Talk about clubs with uncertainty, both his coaches and players. Brisbane's another one all over the place on the coaching front. Um, John Worsfold will be interviewed, despite the Kranz Alan Kranzberg and Trevor Nisbet saying he's probably done, but he will be at least approached by Brisbane to be interviewed, on top of Adam Simpson and Lee Tudor. Interestingly, Billy Longer and Sam Doherty, players who went in the top 12 in the draft in highly recent rated. years, highly rated, well, uh, the, the club has almost conceded they're returning to Victoria next year, or at least will be seeking returns to Victoria. So Billy Longer, um, a pick number, I think, seven guess. Big Ruckman. Yep. Big Ruckman. Yep. And they've almost conceded, and uh, I've been told today it's an 85% uh, likelihood that he will return to Melbourne. Well, Jim.
Yeah, no, Jim's savagely writing notes down here. These people no. will be on the North Melbourne horizon, no, I've yes. got a feeling. <clears throat> no, that is not true. Uh, um, the other uh, discussion point around uh, the Sydney Swans and priority picks and, uh, sorry, cost of living. Uh, per yeah, JB, as you know, the uh, Commission will meet on Brownlow, uh, Brownlow Medal Day in a yep. couple of weeks' time about both <laughs> issues. And there's going to be a mutiny on uh, 17 clubs' hands if the AFL allows Melbourne Footy Club to get the priority pick, which they have officially requested. And, and that's almost a, a given in terms of the uh, defence of that being given by the other clubs. Commission the, are independent, though, Damo. They'll just make their call, won't they, they regardless will, of what other they will guess. I, I find it unlikely, but there will be a, a mutiny, as I said. The cost of living one is the interesting one. I spoke to Richard Collis today. He just he's, he's getting increasingly angered by the Melbourne club's view on this. He feels that it's just wrong for them to lump the Kurt Tippett issue in. He feels that that is actually clouding this issue and that Melbourne footy clubs do not understand it. Um, I spoke to Andrew Newbold, who was part of that equalisation tour a few weeks ago. He said if we're going to go down an equalisation path, we, we need to remove the anomalies in both the cost of living and the priority picks. And he's saying at Hawthorne, if they are expected to tip money, Hawthorne money, back into the overall footy pot, all anomalies have to be removed from both the cost of living allowance and the priority pick. And it's a, it's a view that a lot of clubs, in, in, certainly in Melbourne, feel is the case, but they're just not prepared to go on the record with it just at the moment. But, JB, your views, I believe, are similar to Andrew Newcastle. Oh, no, 100%. Yeah. I, I think you're wasting your time trying to equalise the competition if the two basic pillars, which are the draft and the salary cap, aren't 100% equal. I, I don't understand how you can even contemplate moving on beyond that. So I agree with him. Well, there you go. That's a full basket. Damien Barrett with all the latest Damn news. You are up the street, Barrett. Well done, mate. Right, I'm going to move on. I'll tell you what, uh, this is the situation. There's been a casualty in all of this, uh, and it, it revolves around your friend Stephen Dank, um, Sam, and then it was revealed over the last couple of months that you've got a friendship with him. <laughs> uh, Close friendship. Not, I'm not yes. talking about the accusations either. We're talking about his gate. Now, <laughs> have, have a look at the front gate, which has been filled more often than anything else. He's had trouble with this the whole way through, uh, Samuel. <laughs> uh, he can't get in, he can't get out. He's got a bad oh, latch. He's getting home late at night. He wants to get away from Mitch, Mitch Cleary from Footy Classified. The bloody <laughs> gate, these are all different days where he hasn't been able to get the gate fixed. And I know you're worried about it. <laughs> get up your old mate out, Force. We went down to uh, Home Timber and Hardware. Yes. yes. And uh, this is the stuff, Stevie. Right. WD-40, spray it on the hinges. Yep. And uh, you'll get it open quickly and be able to sneak in away from the throng. Yeah. That's no, what... I've got something here, Sam. Oh, no. WD 9604, oh, my friend. Oh, oh, that will oh, fix the gate. Oh, That'll stop squeaks. Oh, That'll stop all the rough, you bitch. You just give it a bit of a call and she'll open every time. Oh, but... <laughs> Did you just do that on your own, Bill? Hey, I just made that put up. Put that sharp. one together. Oh, hey. I like it. <coughs> well done. Now, listen. I keep talking about these grand final tickets. Ba basically, the main room, Gary, gone. It's restricted viewing? Yeah, we are now... Behind pillars? No, no. What we are is side view. Side yeah, behind view. pillars. Cl close to the stage, no, no, but side still, view... You still sometimes see more. Yeah, you do. Behind you do. the scenes. You see what people Men's are doing. Gallery, you do. No doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, get online, tickettech.com.au, or ring the number 132 849 and get stuck into the limited release our side view close to the stage <laughs> tickets, which are out there now. Now, Gary, we, need, we move from the magnificent sport of Australian rules football mm -hmm. to the equally magnificent sport of V8 supercar driving. Yes. Because the sound down, uh, sound down 500... I don't think we're going to have Jason Bargwana. <laughs> no. Sound down 500 coming up. This week, and yeah. the Nissan team, Bill... Yes. ...absolutely flying. Had a win last week. Had a win last week up at... Uh, Winton. Old uh, yeah, uh, Jimmy Carew. Moffat. Yeah. Yeah. So... Mark. Mick what? Caruso is in. Well, Mick Caruso is here, as is, is he? Rick Kelly. So welcome oh. to Nissan Supercar Drivers. <laughs> and uh, boys, actually, Mick, we might start with you. The Sandown 500 coming up, the big endurance race. How's the Nissan going to go? I think we're going to go all right. It's um, if anything we know about Sandown, or well, being living in Melbourne now for over six years, the weather's uh, pretty unpredictable. So, um, bit of that coming to play and. Um, Got to be there in the last few handful of laps. And Rick, I might just ask you, we went out to Calder Park. I actually first went to Sandown myself, oh. so I went in the complete wrong direction. <laughs> but Bill and Sam got in and did a hot lap. How did that go? 
Yeah, look, great little uh, point of difference for us to get these guys along and share our experience in a V8 supercar. And look, I think they really enjoyed it. Uh, Billy had a grin from ear to ear the whole time in the car. And, and yep. Sam obviously done a lot of driving himself in the past, I think enjoyed it as well. So I believe, uh, Rick, that Sam was very cool and was actually telling you how to drive the car yep. and sat back in a nice, cool, uh, calm, <laughs> collected manner. And then Bill got in and absolutely pants himself. Is that right, Will? I wet the seat. Mate. You do. Yes. They, uh, you're doing 320 <laughs> clicks now. Then you got the... Sh yeah, you got okay. you squeezed in there, Will. <laughs> <laughs> and the suspension had to be lowered and touched. There we are. Look at it. <laughs> Have a look at this grown well, man. Well, through the chicades there. Through the what? The chicades. The chicades. Well, they... Chicane. <laughs> Chicane. Chicane through there, look at this. Yeah. Mate, your foot goes through the front because you're trying to brake, and old dopey <laughs> bloody uh, Rick over there doesn't know when to stop. <laughs> <laughs> there they hit the anchors, here we are. We're doing about 240 clicks there. Oh, Very yeah. nice. Yeah, hey, uh, that's the Nissan, I think it's the Ultimo, is it, gentlemen, which is going to be released as a, as a street car, not uh, yeah, too Yeah, the, the Nissan Ultima, it comes Ultima, out uh, that's it. later this year. Yeah. All right, well, I'll tell you what we then did. Oh. Uh, the boys got out of the, uh, the V8 supercars and we the, the GTR was brought along. Oh. This is the fastest street car on the planet, basically. And the old enforcer dusted off his overalls <laughs> and took Bill and I around <laughs> for a hot lap of his own. And, uh, oh, oh, did he love it Driving too, Miss Daisy. All right, let's have a look. Here we go. The Nissan GTR. If we got an air compressor standing by, we need you just to inject a few more hectopascals into the tyres. <laughs> <laughs> You are the navigator. You've got to tell me when to brake. No, I don't have to tell you. You, you do. have to. Know. When do you brake? When? When? Now, I don't know. Now? No, 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 boss. No, he's braking brake as well. Right. But you've got to tell me when, Bill. That's was your oh, job. I don't know when to brake. I don't know how to drive. Oh, 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 Jesus Christ almighty. Oh, 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 oh. Now braking. Now bring it. Braking. Yep. When are you going to brake? Right. Brake. Slow in, quick out, Jim, is what they say. Now we're going to try and get the thing up to speed down here. Righto. Wind it out here slowly, Bill. Yep. Don't do anything extravagant because it's pretty slippery. It here we slippery. go. 230, 240. 240? Oh, f me. 240! Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Keep your window shut or you get sucked yeah. out by this oh. one coming up behind us. Oh. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that. That's all right. A good work round here. Oh. Sliding out. Uh, it's coming behind us. Jesus will be. He'll get my attention and yours. <laughs> yes, exactly. Break. Right on, Lisa. Oh, f***. Oh, 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 they frightened the shit out of me. Oh, 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 <laughs> That's all right. We're right now. We're back on track. You want to do another lap of stop? Oh, I'm on going in. Right on. You didn't listen to one f***ing thing I said. Jim, I asked you when to tell me to brake. Yeah, and I said brake, and then you just waited another three seconds. Well, nearly we're... rammed us in the wall. So we're nearly pranked. We went over the ripple sticks. <laughs> <laughs> I saw three cars behind me, and I you shit myself. Are <laughs> up your ass and you shit yourself, you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to the great people at Nissan, we did have a ripper day, and I will, I, I don't say this very often, Gary, but to be totally fair to the old enforcer, what? he ain't bad. Oh, oh, he ain't yeah. bad. Bill told me he ended up in the kitty litter. Well, we did, but it's yeah, three V8s up our clacker, yeah, yeah. and he's looking in the room, oh, they're coming, they're coming. Well, we <laughs> it's Rick, kitty litter. Rick and Mick and someone else in a Nissan. Uh, uh, Jimmy Moffat. Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy, you was yep. there? Yep. It came up behind us and I just took my eyes off the road and we went we went cross country. All right. Yeah, we did. Just well, got out like, of their way. You looked like you had their a lot of stars. Fun. And that's why you're never nervous of them, because they know what they're doing and that's a fantastic, exhilarating ride in the Nissan. And they do. And we're right behind you boys. Good luck for the rest of the season. Thanks for coming in. Right. Right. Well Good day out there. We're going to take, take a break. Ken Hinkley's going to join us next on the footy show. Yeah. Turnside Park and Morty Allen Footy Club joining us tonight. So welcome to them. And as we mentioned every week, James Bogues Draft are proud supporters of grassroots footy to celebrate their involvement at the local level. James Bogues Draft virtual kickoff is running in pubs around Melbourne during the weeks leading up to the grand final. Uh, you get uh, to have three kicks for goal in the virtual game when they buy a James Bogues Draft. The top three get to play off against some of the legends of the AFL. 
Pele Dacos, the superstar, Scotty Cummings, former Coleman medalist, Bud Frawley. Not sure what he's doing, kicking for goal. Events are running up until the grand final eve. If you want to be part of it, you can jump on the James Bogues Draft Facebook page for more details. And there you go, there is the great uh, Macedonian marvel himself, Peter Dacos. All right, get stuck into that as Bill Brownless and the danger get stuck into almost football legends. Thank you very much, almost footy legends. Have a look at this first one, a big hanger here. Harlebury College versus Melbourne Grammar. Have a look at this hang. Oh! Carl Amon, have a look at him come down too. Lands on his back. That is a hang, Patrick. You can beat that one, Bill. Albert Park there, Quinas. What about this from the full back? Oh, no. Hang on, so oh, a little no. bit of candy. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> this strolls in, Bill. Oh, no. <laughs> We've got a streaker. New South Wales take on Victoria. We've got a streaker here. He gets involved. And guess what? Oh, he got I'll tackled. Caught for the balls and tackled. Which one did you like, Patrick? I didn't mind the third one, actually. All right, what did the crown like? What about the hanger? No. What about the Davey fullback running out missing it? Oh, the streaker. It is. To Travis Cartwright from Wodonga, you've won this. Thanks to James Bowe's draft, our weekly winner takes home $1,000 cash, while our runners up receive $500 each. Sponsoring over 150 local clubs, James Bowe's draft is a proud supporter of grassroots footy. At the end of the year, our runner-up pockets $20,000 cash thanks to Deep Heat, providing fast, temporary relief from muscle aches and strains. Deep Heat is the stuff of legends. Thanks to our great friends at Home Timber and Hardware, our major prize winner takes home a mega toolbox full of $40,000 cash. That's going to come in handy for that renovation you always wanted. So if you want to do it right, go where the tradies go, Home Timber and Hardware. Try right, send your entries to Almost Footy Legend GPO Box 9, Melbourne, 3001. And don't forget, you can upload your legends directly to our website at thefootyshow.com. Dot are you, uh, Harry Gary? That's it. Get your entries in for a couple of weeks. Hey, this time last year, the Port Adelaide Footy Club were in an awful state. They had a sacked coach. Their future looked bleak. But over the off-season, they made some key appointments. David Kosh, importantly, but the most important one was the appointment of Ken Hinckley, a man that had been overlooked for a number of years for senior coaching roles. He had to be talked into the job. I'm pretty sure Port Adelaide supporters are glad he's taken it. He's got his side in the finals. It is one of the feel-good stories of the year. And he joins us from Adelaide. Kenny Hinckley, welcome. Ho -ho! Thanks, Gary. It was a great story, mate. Um, I'm not sure... I remember meeting with you before the season even started and you had, uh, you had a great buzz and excitement about you. I'm not sure whether you had a final spot pencilled in or not, but you got there and that is a great effort. Yeah, it's been a really good year for us. Uh, you know, we've probably done some things that uh, are a little bit better than we thought we might, might have been going to. So we're really pleased, but we've worked really hard to get to this point. Yeah, I reckon we spoke to you, uh, Kenneth, and you said that you'd already booked you and Donna in for holidays to Hamilton Island. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not quite, uh, big fella. We were, we, were, we were hoping that we might get a holiday there at some stage, but a little bit later in the year. What areas have uh, surprised you most, Kenny? I mean, you had a playing list that was capable but hadn't performed at their best. What are the areas where perhaps have exceeded your own expectation? I think m mainly from the playing group, uh, their ability to keep working. You know, we're, we're quite a young squad and, uh, you know, we've had a really tough pre-season and we've had to go through the whole season. We had a really good start, obviously, and then dropped away a little bit. The boys responded really well after the break and, you know, they've worked incredibly hard to get to this point and, uh, you know, they've pulled off some surprises through the year. I hope they've got a couple more left in them. They're really well uh, led. Travis spoke. Uh, we always knew he was an exciting player. He committed last year. Jackson Tringove committed last year before the future was uh, decided. That must have been the impetus, I reckon, for getting the rest of the group around them. And then you've wanted it and had a, a massive impact as well. Yeah, no doubt. Travis, and, uh, especially, uh, you know, committing to the club was a really important time for him. You know, and obviously then we uh, made some other changes myself and, you know, obviously Koshy's in, in, uh, input's been enormous for us. But, you know, Travis has led them incredibly well himself this year and, you know, Jackson's on our leadership group. So, look, we're really young, but they're, they're a really committed group. You know, they've had some tough times in their past and they're looking forward to some good stuff. You love Malcolm Blight as a coach uh, when you played, Kenny, and a lot of people say you coach like him, hard but fair. You were Blighty's, uh, I suppose, pet. He loved you. Who's your favourite? Who's your pet? 
for all of them. Uh, yeah, no. I get asked that question a little bit because of Blighty, I think. But uh, look, I, I, it's easy for me to say I like them all. The young boys, it's you know they're they're all pretty good, and uh, you know I've got Ollie and Chad and you know Jakey Need and Sam Colhoun. They're all the first years, so you do get excited by them, and you know you just hope that they do well. Well, many congratulations, Ken. It would be nice to think that the whole city's behind you, but you probably get the feeling they're not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I suppose it's, it's good to represent Adelaide this time of the year and uh, now we look forward to uh, doing our best on Saturday night. And you haven't, uh, I wouldn't imagine you're going to shield your boys, Kenny, in any way, shape or form from the whole finals experience. I'd, I'd expect you want them to embrace it and experience everything it provides. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I've said to them early in the week. Finals is a great time of the year to be involved and, uh, you know, it's the fun part of the season, albeit there's some pressure on, but... You know, we certainly are, you know, welcoming all, all the opportunities that come with the finals. And, you know, training the other day, the boys were good. We've got an open session in the morning for our fans. And hopefully when we get over there to Melbourne, we'll get some support for all those people who probably don't want Collingwood to win as much. Yeah, exactly right. And a lot of people weren't with you early on. And Gary Lyon, our man here, certainly didn't oh, think that you'd do so well. And he had to go over to, uh, to Adelaide and get on the wheel there in the uh, mall and get pies thrown at him. And... Some hit him fair in the head. We've got the vision here now, and there's Koshy just squashing a pie, and he loved it, Gaz. He really loved it. And this is again when you tipped against him, I reckon, Gaz, when you, and you had to be carried on the stretcher because you tipped against Port. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, shit. Gaz. So, mate, well, you've got to learn, you gotta learn your lesson. Vision. But you must have a lot of people that have written you off. Yeah, look, I suppose, that, but that's footy, you know, that's... We were coming from a low base and we had lots of things that we uh, you know, had to improve on. And as a club, we've set about trying to do that. You know, importantly, some earn, earn some respect back for the footy club. We've done that. It's been good to, you know, to watch Gary actually have a few problems uh, through the year because of Port Adelaide. I hope he's got one more bad tip in him. All right, Kenny. Well, you've been a star and your club have been unbelievably good. Let's take a look at how you're going to go. Against Trasmok, the maybe Saturday night MCG. Ooh. Russell and Kennedy out. In. Lukey Ball and Harry O, so two premiership stars and Pendlebury. How well did he play on the weekend? He is uh, very, very much closing in, Bill, on uh, favouritism for the Brownlow. Scotty Pendlebury, Port Adelaide, they come across. <laughs> Got the better of Collingwood last time these two sides met to the tune of 35 points. Carlisle, Gray and Hartlett are all very, very important ins to a very good young side that is going to keep Bill getting better and better. Oh, no doubt about that. A very good ins. Robbie Gray, love him, of course. Not sure who you're going to put on the big uh, Travis Cloak just down from me here, Kenny. He's been outstanding. But good to see Alan Didak back. And I would love to see uh, Kenny win and Port Adelaide, but I'm going to have to say Collingwood for me. <laughs> Paddy. Yeah, I think uh, Hamish Hartlett, a, a really important in for Port Adelaide. He's had a, a great season and played some really good games in some in some big games throughout. Have they uh, surprised year. you, Port Adelaide, um, Ooh, Paddy? Yes. They've always had they've had the players to be able to do it, but they've really put it together this year. Uh, the two games they played against us, us, they were absolutely brilliant. And the reason I mentioned Hamish is both times that we played them, uh, he was basically best on ground, and I think he's a really important player You'll for. You'll be them. tipping him. And I'll be tipping Collingwood. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, uh, Trav. Alapate Carlisle, a very important in for Port Adelaide. Does he normally get you? What happens when you play against Port Adelaide? Yeah, I'll get Adapadol. Uh, he's actually a good mate of Reedy, so um, I'm sure Reedy will give him a bit of grief from next to him. But I'm uh, looking forward to the challenge. It's going to be a fantastic game. Um, early on in the year when we played on, they knocked us off uh, pretty easy. So, uh, yeah, we're ready to go. We're looking forward to this game. We've got a lot to lose. Now, I don't know about the distribution of the tickets, uh, Ken, but there'll be huge support for Collingwood. Probably 80% of the crowd will be Collingwood. Uh, you're preparing for that when you kick a goal. Probably a bit of cheering, but fairly obvious silence. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure there'll be a lot of silence. And if we can, we can make that silence quite consistent, that'll be a really good sign for us. And, you know, the players will have to create well, their own um, noise then. We've congratulated him already and the power for getting in. I'm a foundation member there, Gary. When they were down and out, I was yes, asked to were, contribute. You, you didn't send yeah. your money over. Uh, but I, don't, I, I honestly think Collingwood will probably win, but uh, be delighted if the port got up. Gary, your thoughts? Um, well, I'm just going to ask uh, Kenny before we uh, farewell him. We appreciate his time. He's busy. Kenny, what's your um, reconnaissance say about Quentin Lynch and a couple of players that have had little injury doubts about them? you think they're going to play? Yeah, we expect them to play. I mean, uh, 
They've certainly trained and they've got through their training. I mean, albeit there was a little bit of concern early in the week, but they look like they're going to be OK. They're like us. They've got a really healthy list, which you know sets the game up to be a really strong contest, and we look forward to that opportunity. And you smacked the boys from day one, as Billy alluded to. You liked the hard training and you belted them uh, nice and hard. They've stood up really well, should hold them in good stead in what's going to be a pretty uh, frenetic uh, finals match. Yeah, I hope so. Yep. Well, that's a good on you, mate. Well done. Don't get Kenneth. Yeah. 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 We need to take a break. There's one more final we need oh. to uh, you, uh, you, I just We should be politically correct. You called uh, Peter Dacos the Macedonian marvel. I think he's now the Bosnian Herzegovinian marvel. <laughs> yes, that is probably exactly right. That is exactly uh, right. Now, uh, Geelong and probably Fremantle is still to come for fans of both of those mighty clubs. Stick around. We're on the footy show. <laughs> the siren sound? <laughs> How do you sound in bed? It's all different again. Yeah? Oh yeah, Pedri! Oh, your husband's been up to no oh, good. Oh, that's nothing new. Give us a siren. <laughs> How do you sound when you're in bed? And this is what he said. Oh yeah, Pedri! <laughs> is that true? <laughs> yeah. You give him a blast. Tell yeah, him, come why on, aren't Sammy, you down where here? Where are you? Come into Frankston, Sam. Don't be scared. Come back. You meant to be doing the show. This is your show, isn't it, Sammy? That's come why on, he gets buddy. paid the big bucks. That's right. Come on, Sammy. Where are you, mate? Hey. Hey! I want to know where Sam is. Yes. I don't know. He's scared to come in here because he's been naughty boy. Well, he, he, he doesn't like the people of Frankston. Why? What's wrong with the bloody Well, Frankston? I don't know. You tell him. Why? Because he'll be wrong, watching this. Sammy, what's wrong with Frankston? Best place. You're a wanker. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, good man of footy right here. Yes. Excellent man of footy. F***ing legend, all right? Oh, we aren't allowed to swear. No, sorry. No swearing. You can get Mate. <laughs> I'm glad you're here, not Sam. Yeah, give it to him. Sam needs to go to school and learn about psychology yeah. and insight. Yes. True? Yeah, you tell him, because he'll watch he this. He gets paid too much money. We like you, you're a funny man. We like your stuff. But you should be here doing the show. Not yeah. kicking back on your couch, relaxing and getting someone else to do your job. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome here. Good right. on you. You're, you're welcome. welcome. See you, mate. You're, we you're welcome here, all right? Good on you, buddy. Yeah. Anyone. Anyone. Uh -oh, it's good. We love it here. Hey, I know you. Right. You're... Uh, trust you $40. You're $40, sir? Neil from the Young Ones. Fuck <laughs> you out. Beautiful, beautiful girl from the north. Yeah, you're a little bugger, aren't you? Yeah, only a little pocket socket. Oh, pocket I'm, I'm six foot. How tall oh, are you? Geez. Sorry, you're spitting on me, mate. Sorry, mate. Right? No, it's all right. You gave me love for free. For free. <laughs> Where did you meet? Uh, in the Philippines. Oh, really? Yep. You over there on a holiday, yeah? Yes, yeah, mate. No football over there, mate. Oh, fantastic. So, <laughs> first soccer. time to Australia? Yeah. Oh, first and, and you like Frankston? Yeah. What do you uh, like about it? Um. We're not allowed to talk about drugs. Don't, I won't talk about him neither. She's dying, <laughs> she's dying to meet Sam, mate. Oh, you want to meet Sam? Yeah. And uh, would you have any girlfriends that Sam might be able to take out? Maybe even marry? Yeah. <laughs> They'd kill him, mate. They'd kill him. Don't say that word. Do you know the word I'm talking about? I know the word, yeah. Yeah, what was the word? <laughs> ah! Don't do that! See you later. Bye-bye. Candy, candy, candy. I can't let you go. Hello. Now, you have an accent. Let me guess. Are you from Yugoslavia? No! OK. The old bloody Yugoslavia is gone. He's dead. Kaput. Oh. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Who needs a blast in the AFL? <laughs> Do you want some thinking no. music? I want my MTV. Bye bye. <laughs> I'm watching. <laughs> Life is crazy. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> oh, don't say that word. What word was I talking about? I heard that. I could read your lips. <laughs> hey, do you want to uh, tell Sam to 
Most people feel fortunate to have a roof over their heads. If you come from Frankston, you feel fortunate to have a roof in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> have you thought about that? <laughs> For five minutes while that scene goes well, on. Well, those people, anyhow, not the general populace. <laughs> Who are those people? Everyone they from were Frankston. bust in from uh, somewhere. A lot of people, <laughs> great people from our Frankston, viewers. watch yes. our show. Well, they're nice. Direct your anger to Sam and no one else. That's it. That is not what do you mean, scared to go down there? I'll go down there next well, week. Good. Go, like. Sam's back next week. Make sure you meet him down on the street to take him. So long, take on three men on the Settled, very experienced. Joel Selwood is an out and out superstar. This side on Simmons Stadium very, very rarely lose. They play the Fremantle Footy Club and have a look at the ends here. Oh. Huntley, Spur, Dawson, Ballantyne, Subin, Hill, Maine, Walters, Clark, and Nathan Fife all come back into the side. They're unrecognisable last week against the Saints, went down by 71 points. Rossi Lions rolled the dice in a big, big way. Uh, very fortunate that uh, the Brisbane Lions did win. He might have had egg on his face. Can they regroup? Yes. They played here about two months ago and copped a 40-odd point loss. Bill, yes. you've been kissed on the you-know-where. You got the final at Simmons Stadium. This Must is a good result. Must have been a big kiss, Gary. Um, <laughs> but, uh, no, very happy the natives down there. Uh, there was a final in 1897 at uh, Cry Oval that you played in. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, well and done. Paul Chapman plays his 250th yeah, well game. He's yeah, been an absolute game. star, chap, chap, chappy. And, and I tell you, everyone I've spoken to has got a ticket guess. There hasn't yeah. been any dramas. No problem. So, and there was a lot of people jumping up Frio and down. Frio sent a few back, did they? Well, they got 4,000. They sent 2,000 back and then they sent another 250 back. So everyone's got a seat. Everyone's happy. Well, not everyone, but anyway. And uh, well, well, Ross well, Lyons jumping no over the well, moon. He'll play work. anywhere, anytime. <laughs> the dockers were coming over, Bill, the supporters. When they thought they're going to have to get the train or the bus down to Geelong, <laughs> coming to Melbourne would be far enough. I'm not sure why they're playing the final down there, to be honest, Gary. No, but anyway, well, they strange. are. strange. Are, 32,000 so. and a half will be there. Now, uh, Ryan Crowley, who will he go to? Paddy? Uh, I think he'll go to Joel Salwood this week, Bill. Righto. Do you, know, do you know why it's been a really well-run city lately, though? Uh, why would it have been a well-run city, uh, Paddy? It's been a little bit of change in uh, the head office. And the mayor. Well, we've got a new mayor. Keithy Fag was the mayor. What happened to Faggy? Faggy just, uh, <laughs> he got crook. He got so crook. they got a new mayor, and, uh, and it is. Who is it? Your father-in-law. Well, not quite my father-in-law, but Brucey Harwood is back. And, you know, the last time he was in there was yes. 2007. Yes. And that was a pretty good year for John. Uh, very good, 2007. Well, what's the connection with Brucey Harwood? Well, he, you go out with his daughter, the mayor's daughter. I do. Oh. Beautiful Marty. Marty, yeah, handy type too, let me yeah, tell you. Throw into his uh, mum. Uh, <laughs> well, it's nearly the mum, uh, the father-in-law. Don't worry about that, but who are you going for? Uh, I th I'm going for the Cats. I think they're very hard to beat down there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to jump on board going to Geelong. Actually, it'll be an interest in this game. So, if we're lucky enough to win on the weekend, we get the loser. So, um, I'll be watching closely this game and uh, hopefully uh, there's a nice winner and they bash each other, each other up. Yes, yeah, bash each other up, yep. Now, honestly and truly, you couldn't go for anyone but Geelong. But having said that, oh, Gary... No. But... Oh, just beware if you're a Cats fan, just watch out because anything can happen. And uh, they're a, flu a bit fluky. They're not fluky in winning, but they just play fluky football occasionally. They you couldn't tip against them. Seven goals, two they managed last time they played at Simmons Stadium. Fremantle. Three acts. Gary, Seven, two. can I pick your considerable football brain? Can you leave <laughs> ten of your best players, and Monday, you know, Dawson, Ballantyne, Subin, Hill, mm. Maine, they're all their best players. Yep. Can you leave them out? Flirt with your form, happy, happily lose, and then back it up a week later with your best players and 
and oh, redefine I don't mind. it. I don't mind it after in a long year. Territory. At the end of a long year, I don't mind it. You wouldn't be doing it early in the in the piece, but I don't mind it given they had to fly back. What would have been embarrassing, Jim Boy, was uh, if oh, the old Brisbane, Brisbane Lions had a one and you left out your ten best players, which you would have rolled St Kilda and you could have had a home final. Gary. So they've rolled the dice, just got away with it, well, and I think it's uh, not a bad thing. Yeah, Luke yes. McFarlane, will he play? He's named as Travel. an emergency. He jumped on the chartered flight to chartered. Avalon. Uh, I think it landed uh, not that long ago. So oh. he was on that flight, Luke mm. McFarlane. Named as an emergency. He'll play, no doubt. So yeah. one of those uh, nipsies will come out. Not sure. Right. <laughs> well, speaking of uh, superstars, and we've got them all over this show, we go to a break now. I go Shane to Crawford. Uh, I'll tip in Geelong. I go. We go the Aries tip in Geelong. <laughs> um, we go. <laughs> we go to a break. Shane Crawford on the other side will be with the Tigers Premiership legends from 1980. We'll tell you why after this. They want a success. Hell bet on with caution. Yes, welcome back to the footy show. These are stunning bits of television. The final story, the 1980 grand final between Richmond and Collingwood. Footy show fans here in Melbourne will enjoy that straight after we finish tonight. If you're in Adelaide and Perth after the Sunday footy show, you'll be able to enjoy it. So uh, stick around because it is quite extraordinary. Uh, at Crown, uh, the beautiful Crown uh, Crown Complex, of course, home of entertainment here in Melbourne. Oh, yeah. uh, Shane Crawford is parked out there with three of the legends from the uh, Richmond Premiership side: Dale Flea, Waitman, Michael Disco, Roach, and Jeff Rains. Croft, welcome. <laughs> Jim, how are you? Yes, welcome to Crowd Casino, the West End of Crowd Casino. And I do, I have Dale Waitman, Michael Disco Roach, and also Jeff Rains, pretty boy Rains, and he's still looking pretty good. Have a look at him, he looks amazing. <laughs> Richard Gear, look alike, don't you worry about that. But it's all about the 1980 Premiership, the Tigers. They're back in the final, so we thought we'd catch up with the flea first. How, I, how was it? beating Collingwood, winning the Premiership. And I understand you took the Premiership Cup to Mildura with you a couple of days after the Premiership Cup, and you lost it. <laughs> well, I didn't actually lose it. There was, I'm a good Catholic boy, as you are. And it got pinched. It got pinched? <laughs> by the Catholic police. <laughs> no, and the next day, I had to go back. Next morning, 10 o'clock mass, off he, he procession, yep. <laughs> Premiership Cup, the body in Christ up there. And they put it on the altar. And that's what happened. Though. So we found it, but the priest knocked it up. They thought all my mates had melted it down and sold it. Because I've got a couple of mates like that, like yep. you know. No, well, not at all. And you're a bit of a rapper too. Back in your time, well, you Well, uh, apparently so. I can't remember this. I can't remember this. Oh. Yeah. Can't remember this. Well, can guys, I? Oh. Oh. I'm really good rapper. But then again, Rainsy, as you said, never had a hair out of place. Yep. I just went down his line, I've good and haven't got air out of place. <laughs> and that's what it is. Uh, you're looking amazing, Dale Waitman. And Michael Disco Roach, uh, one of the all time Disco. great full forwards going around, seven time uh, leading goal kicker at Richmond, a Coleman medalist a couple of times, Mark of the Century, one of the all time greats. Disco, where'd you get your nickname from? Uh, well, it certainly wasn't from dancing. I think it was because I couldn't dance, was mainly uh, why I got the nickname. But no, rhythm wasn't one of my things. But. Uh, People thought I could dance and they'd wait for me to come into nightclubs and I'd just stand near the bar. <laughs> <laughs> a bit like Bill. And what about goal kicking? What's the secret of kicking a goal? Uh, probably don't chase too much and all that sort of stuff. Don't get out of breath and uh, just have a routine and kick through it and kick some goals. So that's all I did. So. Oh, he's still got it. One of the all-time greats. And on the end, we've got Jeff Rains. Jeff Pretty Boy Rains, who had 36 possessions in the grand final in 1980. He was Brownlow medal favourite, and guess what? He rocks up to the Brownlow. <laughs> they didn't give him any votes at all. Can you believe that? <laughs> Rainsy, you're not happy with that. Well, Crawford, all I can say is I should have taken a leaf out of your book, mate. I don't know what you did, but you won one. Uh, I didn't get a vote in that year, but uh, as I said in the documentary, uh, I'm pretty privileged and happy to win a premiership and be the best and fairest player in that year of 1980. So that was, uh, for me, absolutely dream come true. And exciting to see the Tigers are back. They're ready to roll. I think they're ready to roll. Um, I think it's going to be an a, a absolute a fantastic clash between Carlton and Richmond. Arch rivals and enemies. And uh, I don't think there'll be a lot in it, but uh, I reckon the Tigers might just get across the line. Ah, oh, very good. And this is what it's all about. 1980 Premiership oh, Cup. 
We are going to say goodbye, three of the all-time greats, and we're going to sing the song. I used to be a Richmond supporter. Away we go. Oh, we're from Tigerland. <laughs> the fighting fury went from Tigerland. <laughs> Yellow and black. Don't call them the three of the all-time greats of the Richmond footy club, and don't worry. They will be up and about and excited about their return to the final series. The final story comes up straight away after us tonight, the Sunday footy show. On Sunday, we'll get to see it after that in Perth and also Adelaide. But this is uh, an unbelievable thing. Peter Dixon and his team do these documentaries, Jim, yeah. in a manner that uh, no one else does. They take you to places that you've never been before and they tell you stories that you've never heard before. And this will be an absolute beauty coming up after us tonight. What about that big clunk by Disco? How high did he get? I was looking at Paddy Dangerfield when he took that and Paddy's shaking his head. Are you going to pay that, Paddy, or not? <sighs> It'd be nice to get up half that height. Yeah, Second, look how high he gets. Are you paying this mark or not? If they pay Ablett Smart, then you have to pay that, absolutely. Oh, of course you're paying oh. it, Bill. He's up on the second tier. No. Uh, they yes, are very good. Three stars. So uh, you don't want to miss it tonight. You don't want to head off to bed. It's, it's September. You stay up, mate, this time of year. <laughs> Footy show, <laughs> grand final <laughs> show, Ooh. sold out. All gone, Done. Jimmy boy. All over. Don't ring any more. Tickets are gone. Ah, oh, there that we go. record. Well, and one of the great reasons why they're gone, Gary, <laughs> is that Bernard Fanning is going to be performing. Now, this is Departures, by the way. Oh, this is Bernard's second solo album. Follows on from the number one, Tea and Sympathy. Uh, which, yeah, I worked to that camera there. And, of course, his amazing career fronting Powderfinger. It's a great solo album. It's out now. And it is a great privilege for us to have Bernard Fanning as one of the headline acts, Rod Laver Arena, for the grand final footy show. All right. Now, yeah, before we go to break... Melbourne Footy Club supporters, or general footy fans this time here, best and fairest, the count for Melbourne has been on tonight. It has been run and won. Colin Garland, runner-up, oh. best and fairest for the Demons, and for the second year in a row, Nathan Jones has won the Bluey Trust on medal. So that is a fantastic effort. I know the Demons are struggling to win a best and fairest. It's a great effort to win two in a row. Fantastic. We'll take a break and wrap up the footy show after this. <laughs> The Nissan Navara Tough Love team are at it again. We are arriving at a beautiful little country town called Molden, and they need our help, so we are heading to the Molden Football and Netball Club. Well, here we are. Let's go and check it out. Today we've got Tom, who's changing a couple of doors and hardware over. We've got Asher changing the uh, TV antenna and also doing a little bit of landscaping out the back. And Justin's going to have to really put in today to get the uh, painting out of the road. Once again, the material's supplied by Home Timber and Hardware. And we really hope that the Molden Football Club can benefit from what the Nissan Tough Love team are doing here today. Andrew, you're the president here at the Molden Football Club. What can you tell us about the club? Uh, this is our 140th year in oh, existence. Wow. As you can see, the place needs a, a good pep up and yep. we can't thank you, you guys enough for being here today. Now Marty, this club is very close to you. I've been here 23 years Shane, I've been a part, a part of the Molden Footy Club helping out. Oh look, I'm thoroughly impressed being a part of the Nissan Navara Tough Love team. We have come to the end of our Nissan Navara Tough Love makeover. Are we happy team? Yes! I said are we happy? Yes! yes! Well, until next time for the next makeover for Nissan Navara, we will see you then. Very well done to Shane Crawford, well done to Nissan who are doing their bit for local footy. And that should never be forgotten. We've come to the end of a big show. Don't go to bed though, the final story is coming up. Bill, what have you got coming up? Oh, I've got to give this a plug Utopia, what which is, is uh, Denny Ute Muster. He's 15 years old this year. Step so out get, the front in the, and read it. get in the Nissan Navara. Yeah. And <laughs> these are your jocks. Get in the Nissan Navara and head to Deneliquin the weekend after the grand final for the Denny Ute Muster. How many Utes there? There'll be thousands. And you're going to be there? I'll be there. Yeah. Fantastic. Drinking frothies. Hey, Danger. <laughs> Sorry you're not the finals, mate. We appreciate you coming over. Are you going to hang around for the weekend? Uh, best and fairest tomorrow night, so uh, oh. straight back tomorrow Who morning. Who wins that? Matty. Uh, I think Richard Douglas. Very good year, Dougie. Oh, well, good luck with that. And, Trav, good luck to you, mate. You Thank are you. in the finals, so good luck yes, against Yes, absolutely. Out. Thanks for you. Samuel, you've been great tonight. Sluggy oh. start, but you got there oh, in the end. Uh, Jim, well done yes. to you. Good luck to all the Thank teams. You, Big week of finals. We'll be back next Thursday night at 8.30. <laughs> See you then.